Welcome to the recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we've been organizing our user interface a little bit on the JavaScript client for our web um, mapping application. Essentially, it's a, an interactive application to explore urban environments for various um, sustainability criteria and livability criteria. Here we're uh, essentially looking at a map of food sources in Tampra and a uh, kind of a buffer around those food sources of you know reasonable like catchment how many houses they can serve more or less conveniently and there's missing data here there's certainly are more um, food sources around uh, I think I've got the data clipped to a rectangle just to keep things simple while I'm working with it previously in order to get these buffers working I had a form up here that had a couple of um, parameters buffer distance in miles and uh, today we moved the um, form over to this inspector view and you know had to wire up a little bit of a state manager so that uh, it can communicate across components there in different branches of the tree their parent they share a parent I guess the router is controlling these but uh, uh, their their local state is not uh, gonna to my knowledge be easy to to share so when the state changes here the map wouldn't know about it so we added view X and uh, essentially allowed these uh, defined a more or less a global state uh, for this particular you know page or view the food um, food view of our of our app each each of the own views could have its own state which is pretty cool and I guess they call them state modules so let's go ahead and take a look at how this works um, we're using the Quasar framework to help us scaffold the app, and Quasar is um, pretty. It brings a lot of uh, nice features, like helping you build, um, like more or less hybrid mobile apps and things like that. And like the Vue CLI, it's got scaffolding commands. So we told um, Quasar to scaffold a UX store called Food, and that um, the idea here is that you don't. As, comp, uh, as uh, applications get more complicated, they sometimes having a global store with everything gets really hard to reason about and hard to maintain. So by defining s kind of state modules, you can have a uh, relevant state you know, to on a smaller scale, which is pretty much what we're after. Originally, I was hoping that I could just sh somehow share state directly between these uh, by defining them in the same template or on the same view component almost, uh, which would be the equivalent. But in any case, I. I think we've come to a, a pretty good um, compromise. You just have to learn how things are done. This is all new to me. So essentially, Vuex uh, or Quasar scaffolded all of this. It um, creates a new Vuex store and defines a module based on the name that I provided and Im does the imports and everything. And it defines a folder here with several files. Um, I think it's a little bit overkill for our initial um, purposes, but in any case, we have an index file in there that exports a default dictionary uh, that takes, um, they split out all the state into the dictionary components. So um, getters, setters, uh, or getters, mutations, actions, and the state uh, function. So we ended up only using the state function, which returns a dictionary of our two state properties so each of these fields is, is responsible for one of the state properties and define some mutations that essentially uh, they're functions that run that allow view and view x to track the state over time and you can roll it back and things like that and really all we're doing is just taking a new value and replacing the old value so these aren't anything complicated but you can do any kind of synchronous code here uh, like validation and stuff like that and if you need asynchronous code, then you can even go up a layer to using actions. But since we're doing things synchronously here, um, mutations takes us as far as we need. Then what we needed to do is update our both of our view components. So the food menu is essentially what's responsible over here for rendering this um, menu here. It just has two inputs, a Q, Quasar input, a, a Quasar input, and a Quasar select. That is, they're bound to a local model which is um, actually where's the buffer units 
uh, here we are. They're using these computed properties instead of, it was originally part of the, the data model, but we, since we're using the state, then we need to uh, use computed properties. So inside of these computed properties, you define getters and setters because this module is also responsible for updating or for setting the new values. So to get it, we just ask the store state from the food module and get the value of that property we're after. And likewise, if you're going to set it, we define a mutation in the food module called set buffer distance. So it just finds the food mo module right here, and then it knows to use the mutation here. It just does that kind of a little bit magically, but also kind of ver verbosely. But I can understand why you need to define these getters and setters. And the same thing for the buffer unit. So getting it and setting it with a new value, setting it calls the uh, function where you can update the original state with the provided units. Uh, from there, we could now clean up our, our, um, our map component. Here it is. So we removed the form components that were here previously. And um, essentially, we're switching everything now over to computed units rather than having local state, uh, local data attributes. And it's the same pattern, though. To get it, you just um, call the state and get the value directly from the state. That way, it's reactive. When it updates, it changes. And um, now, the code in the com the uh, derived um, functions where we where we derive the buffers and we create the union of those, so it kind of dissolves the overlapping buffers. Didn't have to change really at all because it, the computed properties and data properties are treated equally. They don't have any like namespacing, so that was nice. The only other changes here, I've been chasing my tail on this weird error where we're getting some console errors about not being able to access you know, various properties, like features of undefined. Uh, we're, and we are using um, properties features. So at some point, either buffers is undefined, or uh, I'm not sure exactly. I, I can't really get down to it. So I've just put checks throughout the whole, all of the code everywhere I can think, I can think of to check that it's not undefined. Uh, even in our templates, I'm, I've had these VFs, like it shouldn't render the, the components if the data aren't there. So that was, seemed obvious to me, but um, still getting uh, errors. So hopefully it won't be a problem in production. It, I just don't understand what's causing it, causing those errors. Uh, but right now everything is rendered. It's just every, like so often I'll refresh and uh, one of the layers won't render, even though the data are available. For example, this points layer won't render, but the buffers and will render, meaning like the buffers were able to be derived from the points, but the points aren't layering in there. And I've got a weird error about something can't access features of undefined. So I don't know, kind of those things like make you want to pull out your hair a little bit sometimes, or scream into a pillow, or I don't know, <laughs> hopefully not uh, get too stressed out, but that's why we keep a nice warm cup of tea and just take a break if uh, things get too frustrating and come back to it with a maybe a night's sleep or something like that. Anyway, today we're at a really good stopping point. We got things working and the way I was hoping to do it. So thanks for your time. This has been a CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. If you'd like to get involved with this or other projects, stop by CodeBuddies.org. There's a lot of great uh, groups forming on CodeBuddies for all different types of uh, technologies, either React or just general JavaScript, Vue.js, you know, in that family, or Python and data science. Ruby on Rails, Java, job interview prep, you name it. There's a bunch of, of uh, groups forming, and uh, there's at least a couple of hangouts every day. So if you just want to hang out and see what other people are up to and, and learn how uh, to make open source software, it's a great community to get involved with. Also, the CodeBuddies platform is open source. You can stop by github.com slash CodeBuddies to check on the progress of the new generation CodeBuddies platform. I believe there are a lot of open issues that are good for newcomers, and uh, they have fairly extensive documentation to help you get up and running with a development environment. All right, well, thanks for your time. Have a great day, and stay well out there.